Welcome to Lesson 11, Using Adobe Photoshop Filters. This little video snippet kind of plays on the previous one in that you'll see some applications of filters and even using some smart filters, but maybe in a just slightly different way. Now the first thing I want to explain to you is that some filters that you might apply will play off your foreground and background color. So if you get some odd results like you decide to run a filter and you get orange and green and you're trying to figure out why or where did they come from, check your foreground and background color. So like for instance, some of the sketch filters, like if I choose, um, let me select the layer here, ta-da, sky background. If I choose the filter sketch graphic pen, when I apply this, and I have black and white as my default, my sketch is actually black and white. But if I were to cancel this and just come up with some other funky colors in here, and this is what usually happens, you just have something really bizarre, and then you choose filter, sketch, graphic pen again, now look at the effect I get. So do keep that in mind as you're working. Now I'm pressing D to make sure I'm back at the default. I am choosing Filter, Render, Clouds. Now if I choose Clouds, I get this, yes, very ugly, dreary day, but I don't necessarily like that. So what I can do, immediately after I run this filter, you'll see that under Edit, I can choose Fade Clouds. Now if I were to File Save, or do a selection, or anything else, Edit, Fade Clouds would be gone. Now that's not the case with smart objects, and I'll show you that in a short bit, but if I choose Fade Clouds, I can come in here and say, no, you know what, I really want to bring that opacity down a bit. That looks a little better. I could even change my blending mode if I wanted to. Okay, so I've had that applied. Now let's take that a little bit differently. Let's say that I decide on this particular guy, the alien, that I'm going to run a filter. And before I do, I decide I'm going to change him into a smart object. Okay. And I'll run the um, filter gallery. And in this case, I'll just apply some random effects. And you'll see, okay, the last ones that I ran are in here. So maybe I want to get rid of these. So I just click on the trash can. And I'll leave neon glow. Um, and maybe I'll do, we'll just do some different things, diffuse, glow, and then create a new one. And in here I'll do ba relief, and then I'll create a new one. And you can see I'm clicking on the new effect, and this one will be chrome. So this has sufficiently turned into something really ugly. But notice that I can change the order of these filter effects. Nonetheless, I've got all these effects go going on in this particular image. I press OK. But since I did it when it was a smart object, I can turn it off or on and go back to the original at any time. I can also take my little mask here and notice I activated by clicking on the um, actual thumbnail mask. Take my paintbrush and as long as I've blackened the foreground color, I can erase where I don't want that effect or press X to switch back to white and bring it back. X, mirror, just want the eyes showing. Now, here's the really great thing. I showed you Edit Fade before, which is a nice feature if you want to go back and edit your filter. But like I said, if you did not use a smart object, you couldn't go back to Edit Fade again unless you reverted your file to saved and then reran that filter or did undo several times. Now, in this case, I've got this filter gallery that I ran, and it is on a smart object. If I right click on the filter, then I can edit the smart filter blending options at any time. Close the file, open it three weeks later, decide that I want a different blending mode for that, maybe I want to change the opacity of that, but notice that I can come back to this. I'm going to press OK, come back to this and edit this again, comes up, and I can totally change this as many times as I want. Big benefit to using smart filters over just regular filters, of course. Now, taking this a little further, let me go ahead and apply another filter. 
This filter almost isn't a filter. It's called Vanishing Point. And I'm going to turn on the package design. This box was created in Adobe Illustrator just using the 3D extrude filter on a regular rectangle. So if you want to experiment, that's a good way to get packages. I'm going to turn on my design layer. And I want to apply this design to this box. Maybe, you know, I'm doing wine boxes, toy boxes, whatever, but I want to show the client what it's going to look like in a comp stage. So I'm going to select all. I'm doing Control A, and I'm going to copy it, Control or Command C, and I'm going to turn that guy off for right now. Come back to this package layer. Now, if I apply the filter at this point, then um, it's going to virtually destroy this one layer. Like, for instance, I won't be able to move it or change it or reposition it if I don't like it. So what I always do before I create a new vanishing point filter is create a new blank layer on top of the layer that I'm applying it to. So for instance, I'll hold down my Alt or Option key, click on New Layer when I have this package layer selected, and I'll call this Box Design. You can call it whatever you want. And now with that blank layer selected, I choose Filter, Vanishing Point. Now, as a default in this particular file, there's a plane that's already been created. I'm going to just press Control V, and you'll see that it pastes this package on, and then I can just drag it in place. Now, if I hold down my Alt key or Option key, Cancel becomes Reset. Let me go ahead and do this by deleting it. Okay, You've got your own box. You want to fit your stuff on there. You can choose to take the Create Plane tool, and notice that all I have to do is click, and click, and click, and click. Now, I want my um, plane to show up as blue, because if it's not, then I've got this perspective off someplace. So I can kind of play with it until I get it to be blue. Now, I want to also come off the side here. So I'm going to hold down my Control key or Command key and grab the middle point, and that allows you to pull off the side. Now, that's a perfect 45-degree angle, but I'm not on a 45-degree angle. So I take this and I pull it out a little bit. I hold down my Alt or Option key, and then I can kind of swing this into place and then just pull this back. So that's how I create my own plane. And of course, I can still Control v or Command-V, paste this in, and when I drag it, it snaps right into place. 